Brothers and sisters, welcome to Beyond the Beacon with uh, Bishop Kevin Sweeney, a weekly conversation about faith in the Diocese of Patterson, how we respond with faith, hope, and love in the Diocese of Patterson and beyond the Diocese of Patterson. I'm joined uh, by Bishop Kevin Sweeney and our guest today, Dr. Peter Kilpatrick, who is the 16th president of of the Catholic University of America since 2022. Dr. Kilpatrick had previous tenures in academic administration and teaching in multiple universities, lots of experience in strategic planning, personnel management, faculty and student recruitment, research, academic partnerships with other universities. And he is joining us today to talk about Catholic higher education. So, Bishop Kevin, it's been a week since we saw you on the, this podcast. I'm replacing Jay Agnes uh, temporarily because uh, he couldn't be here today. But you were with Jay last week on the podcast. Yes, um, and uh, I guess two weeks ago it was we had your other half of from the uh, Coffee with Cupke post uh, podcast because Monsignor Cupke, our archivist. Uh, took us on a little tour of the ar- diocesan archives. Uh, four years in the diocese, I finally got to visit, made the time to visit the archives, but it was a wonderful experience. And uh, uh, Father Paul, I'm a big fan of Coffee with Cupcakes. Yeah, so uh, you're doing the great work there. Thank and uh, happy to be uh, here, especially with uh, Dr. Kilpatrick today. And um, uh, I was blessed just to return yesterday from five days in Mexico at a um, uh, an orphanage uh, run by these wonderful Sisters of Mary. And uh, we'll see more about that another time. But uh, um, but wonderful to be here today on the Feast of St. Monica. And Dr. Kilpatrick was kind enough to to join us uh, to visit the diocese. And uh, Julie McGurn, a, a parishioner at St. Vincent's, uh, who is on the board, right, at, yes. um, at Catholic U, uh, was uh, helpful in uh, arranging Dr. Kilpatrick's visit. And you're going to speak a little later to um, our high school um presidents and principals uh, about Catholic higher, uh, higher education. So so thanks for taking the time to be with us and and, and to come on the podcast. So uh, look forward, looking forward to the to the conversation. I'm thrilled to be here, Bishop thanks. Sweeney. Great thanks to be lot. here. Thank you. Bishop, do you want to start with a sure. prayer? Um, I think it's providential that Dr. Kilpatrick is here as we celebrate today the Feast of St. Monica and tomorrow the Feast of St. Augustine. We think of uh, education and uh, its parents who are the first educators of their children. And then um, in our higher education, both in, in our high schools and in our, our universities, um, uh, we look at, uh, at St. Augustine as a, a doctor of the church and um, a reminder of uh, the importance of, of teaching our faith with love. And uh, um, so uh, it's, a, it's a good time uh, to be together and, and to talk on, uh, speak a little bit about these topics. So let's place ourselves in God's presence, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Come, O Holy Spirit, and fill the hearts of the faithful and kindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your spirit and we shall be recreated and thou shall renew the face of the earth. O God, who has taught the hearts of the faithful by the light of the Holy Spirit, grant us in that same spirit to be truly wise and always rejoice in your consolation through Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Our Lady, Seat of Wisdom. Pray pray for us. St. Monica. Pray pray for us. St. Augustine. Pray pray for us. All holy men and women. Pray pray for us. us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Well, Doctor, thanks so much for again for being here, and it was great to spend a little time uh, just this morning to uh, catch up. Uh, we we met um, at the Eucharistic Congress uh, just uh, last month, I guess, in July. And uh, I was privileged to be there t- uh, two years ago when uh, you were um, a little more than two years ago, almost. Uh, you're going into your third year, right? Going so, into my third year. Uh, yeah. I was there for your installation. Thank you for um, coming. That was, that. It was a privilege. And uh, um, so maybe we could just begin by giving us a little bit of background. Uh, I know you said uh, your dad served in the, um, uh, in, in the Air Force, and uh, you can mm-hmm. tell us a little bit about that. And maybe... Um, what led you? Um, you were sharing that you came into the faith a little bit later yeah. in life, and uh, and and maybe a little bit of your background and 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 the short version of what led you to to become the the, the president of Catholic University. Yeah, great. Thank you, Bishop Swinney. So, yeah, my my dad was a uh, um, graduate of West Point in the mid '40s, uh, right in the middle of the war. Uh, was a bomber pilot in World War II. Uh, as I was sharing with you, you know, he. Flew 56 missions over Germany and, and Romania and was shot down a couple of times. And it's kind of remarkable. Um, I have him as a father. <laughs> wow. Right? Um, and, you know, very blessed to have a loving family growing up. Um, 
uh, as I shared with you, I had a, a little bit of a spiritual awakening uh, when I was uh, nine or ten years old. I was baptized as a Methodist, mm-hmm. uh, and then um, really uh, didn't find a, a, a worshiping community that I could be a part of. Uh, went off to college, uh, met my wife to be Nancy. Um, who was a cradle Catholic, and we got married, and I was actually, uh, you know, I signed a form when I married her so we get married in the church that I promised to raise my kids Catholic. Uh, and then when our first child was born, Elizabeth, and three years after we married, um, my wife reminded me, she said, <laughs> oh, you know, she good. said, you know, <laughs> you know we, we made this promise, right, and, right. and uh, uh under a little duress, I, I went, and the very first homily I heard at a mass after she was born was a was a homily on life. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was a beautiful homily delivered by a, a very senior uh, Paulus priest in in the parish of St. Lawrence in Minneapolis, where I was in graduate school, and it moved my heart. And I just I said, you know, I was almost in tears listening to this homily. And I said, you know, I want to believe what that man believes. Wow. I want to, I want to know what he knows. And I went into the RCIA, became Catholic at the age of twenty-five. And you know, thanks be to God, I've never had a moment of a lack of faith in forty-three right, right. years. And you said you became a fan of theology, right? Reading theology and. And did. Ha- after having gone through the RCIA, uh, you were invited to lead the RCIA. <laughs> I was. I, I, uh, I, my first uh, teaching position was at uh, North Carolina State University in Raleigh, North Carolina. And we were saying uh, in 83, right? Uh, when in the, the 1983. Wolf, when the Wolfpack won the, on the Jim Valvano, yeah, the Cinderella Jimmy, story, right? Jimmy V won the national right, championship right. with the cardiac Good pack. timing there. <laughs> So I, I moved there, and within a few months, uh, the director of religious education at my parish, St. Michael, approached me and said, would you, would you be willing to be our RCIA catechist? And I, I told him, I said, Steve, I'm a baby Catholic. I, don't, I know nothing. And he said, oh, yes, but you're, you're a professor at NC State, so you, know, you must be a good learner, yes. and you must be a good teacher, so why don't you do it? So I... I, I said yes, I, and, and really that launched me on an adventure of really learning my faith as an adult. And I, I remember, you know, I, I, as I shared with you, I, I really bought many, many hundreds of theology and philosophy books, and I listened to probably thousands of cassette tapes, you know, a lot by Scott Hahn and Fulton Sheen and, you know, all these catechists of the— of the 50s, 60s, 70s, and 80s, and so I'm sort of self-taught, but um, it was it was it was an interesting education. And and then you said it, uh, that that parish uh, became your parish, and it's been your parish now for over 40 years. Is that 41 right? years, yeah. Right. yeah right. Since 1983, we've right. been members of St. Right. Michael the Archangel Parish in Cary, North Carolina. This time of year, as we think about going back to school, some have already been already gone back and. Uh, uh, we'll be going back, especially after Labor Day. Uh, but also, parish life kind of starts up again. And mm. just, I think, to mention, to, you know, not uh, uh, so many um, good volunteers, people of faith, who um, get an invitation from their mm. priest or pastor, say, could you help with this and be a catechist or help with the RCIA? Yeah. It's amazing what God can do, right, from mm. a little uh, invitation. And if we say, okay, I'll give it a shot. And uh, so, um, you know, as bishop, I think of our, our pastors and our parishes. And, mm. and as you say, coming to know the importance of parish life, right? Mm. Of, and a family being part of a, mm. and, and Catholic education, the parents are their first teacher, the ways of faith, but uh, uh, sharing that um, responsibility with um, with catechists, Catholic school teachers, um, yeah. uh, religious ed programs, uh, um, That that's where education uh, begins. Uh, but then we also are grateful for um, our Catholic high schools and Catholic universities that, uh, that continue that. Uh, again, being here, uh, Feast of St. Monica and thinking the, mm. the, the parents raising their, uh, Monica tried her best and had a rough time. Don't give up, right, parents? That are, if your children are far from the church, that's always important to it remember. It took a few years. It took right, a few years. praying, and Monica did. And But then Augustine, you know, becoming the great theologian mm. and doctor of the mm. church, and and maybe even now um, in our society and culture that, um, that, uh, that our Catholics are educated in the faith, right, and able to 
to to speak to uh, to bring our faith into the public square, which is such a challenge these days. Yeah. Um, uh, I guess we can jump into uh, your getting to Catholic University and 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 what that responsibility has been like, or what the experience has been, and um, and 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 what the students. I think you said the students were a, a great surprise in terms of how good their uh, goodness, right? Yes. So you know, you uh, I I couldn't. Uh, punctuate more your comment about how important it is uh, to invite people to learn and to help and to catechize and to evangelize. And I like to call that come and see ministry. That's right. Come that's and right. see. You know, that's what Jesus did. Jesus said, you know, the the, the apostles, he, he, he right. set up, I'll make you fishers of men. They said, Jesus, where do you live? He said, come and see. Right. You that's know, right. so to be inviting, it's remarkable how People want to be invited to help build up the church. Um, so how did I get to Catholic University? Well, I was at NC State University for 25 years, and I thought I would never leave. Um, and uh, we raised our four children in North Carolina. And uh, then in 2007, I was I was approached by someone who said, you know, the University of Notre Dame in South Bend, Indiana, is looking for a dean of engineering, and wow. you're, you know, you're well known, and and would you apply for the job? Would you come be our dean? And and just and, to, to to let people know, Dr. Kilpatrick's background was in chemical engineering, engineering. yeah, before Catholic higher education, right? Right. So I had, you know, and I loved I loved NC State. It was a wonderful university, but I I wanted to be someplace where I could fully live out my faith in the in, academic in a public right, way right, in right, a very right, public right, way right. but also you know do my profession so i went to notre dame i was i was there 10 years i i was very grateful uh when the provost at that time said you know 10 years is enough uh you know we we don't need a dean for 20 or 30 right, years right. even though i th i thought i was very successful because it it kind of forced my hand a little bit, and I went to another university and was asked to be the provost at the Illinois Institute of Technology, which is a technology school in Chicago. Three of our kids lived there. But then I was ready to retire. Wow. And uh, a friend of mine from Notre Dame called me in 2021, and he said, Peter, the, the Catholic University of America is looking for a new president. You should apply. You'd be really good at this. And I said, no, Carter, I'm I'm gonna retire. And and he kind of played a trump card. He said, the church needs you to go to Catholic University. And so after he badgered me for a while, I I applied to kind of get him off my back. Yeah. And then I went on the interview and just fell in love with the place. Just That's absolutely great. fell That's in great. love. So I it's clear to me that God kind of leads you by the nose. Uh, into most of the major decisions and events of your life. Right, right. And, you know, I'm not in control. He's in control. Would you say anything about your experience at Notre Dame uh, versus Catholic University? Similarities, differences? I'm just curious. Yeah, Two well-known institutions. Go ahead, yeah. Right. And maybe just before that, um, having been at so long at North Carolina State, and the attraction of going to a Catholic university, mm. maybe your first impression of um, the, maybe the difference between North Carolina State and, Notre, and Notre Dame, and yeah. then between Notre Dame and, and, and Catholic U, that would be great. Yeah, NC State University is a land-grant university. It was, uh, you know, started in the 1880s, I believe, and it was specifically started as a flagship public university for engineering and veterinary school and all that. So secular, with a good campus ministry, but a secular university and a public university, big class sizes, mm -hmm. uh, you know, good instruction. You know, we took great pride in educating our young chemical engineers when I was there, and I enjoyed it. It was a good experience for me, very research-oriented. Um, then I went to Notre Dame, private, uh, when I got there, you know, the shadow of Father Hesburgh was large, really large. Yeah. <laughs> it was very large. Right, right. So very paternalistic university, uh, sort of run almost like a, uh, you know, a mom and pop kind of shop. Uh, very, uh, very Catholic, uh, very uh, focused on the sacraments. There are 60 chapels there, you know, they're, they're in every dorm. 
Uh, I had a chapel in my engineering building, and we wow. built a chapel, wow. and, and we had daily mass in there. And I think they wow. had a football that's team good. as well, right? That they had a right. football team, <laughs> and that's and that's uh, the football uh, at Notre Dame really helped the university raise its visibility, right, right. and that led to lots of people wanting to go to Notre Dame, which in turn led it to become very selective, mm -hmm, which in right. turn engendered you know some academic excellence. Right. So I, I, you know, I would say I had a very good experience there for, for 10 years, not without its difficulties. Sure. Um, so, you know, right. I, I think we can, sorry to interrupt, but, um, Catholic identity and, and, and the media yes. of, uh, Catholic university, uh, um, it's, it's a challenge these days, right? I mean, it is. And, and what's challenging about it is the leaders of American culture send their sons and daughters to Notre Dame. And American culture, as we know, has become very worldly. Yes. And the church is very otherworldly. And, you know, really, as Catholics, we're called to be countercultural. Right, we're, right. we're called to be not with the world, in the world, but not of, of the, the world. world. Right. And, and what I saw at Notre Dame, w with all due respect to my good friends there, and I have many good friends there, is that there's a— there's a real uh, challenge for the soul of the university. And I, actually, there have been books written about this. The, right. You know, there was a book written in, the, I believe, the 80s called The Dying of the Flame right, and right, right, by right. Jim Birchall. And, right. and so— And then, yeah, maybe um, just the um, experience of the Catholic University of yes. Steubenville, right? I mean, that, um, yes. uh, that, that's uh, an example, I think, in our country of somebody saying, wait a second— what does it mean to say we're a Catholic university? Yes. And Father Scanlon, and uh, and and they're really, I think, a, a blessing, um, uh, and have been over these decades, um, um, because they're so uh, um, uh, intentional, right? About yes, and, and uh, I'm sure that's uh, and uh, having the name, the Catholic University of America, right. um, I'm, I'm sure has been for your your predecessors, and now for yourself and the faculty to say, how do we? Uh, um, focus on that intentionality and, and that Catholic identity yes. while still having to be a, a, a university, a huge university, right? And growing up in the world. Yeah. Right, yeah. So, right. so uh, the Catholic university of America in, in all fairness went through the same cultural turmoil of the 60s, 70s and 80s. Right, you right, know, right. many people may know the name father Charlie Kern, yeah. who was a moral theologian right, at Catholic right. university who led the dissent right. against uh, Pope humanity St. Vitae. Paul yeah, the right, sixth right, and humanity right, right. Vitae. But we righted the ship and, you know, when, when Pope Benedict disciplined father Kern and then, uh, you know, Father O'Connell came and served as president in the 90s, and he was very— now Bishop of Trenton. Now Bishop of Trenton, right, very right. intentional about Catholic right, identity. Right, right. And then John Garvey, who came in 2010, very intentional about Catholic identity. And now, you know, the, the mantle kind of falls to me, and I'm, I ask myself daily, how do I raise the standard of Catholic identity? How do I be more intentional about Catholic identity? How do I— authentically live out our Catholic identity at this university? And what can I do to encourage people to embrace and celebrate and be joyful about our Catholic identity? And I've got a lot of thoughts in that regard. Well, and, your, your experience in public university and then a Catholic university at Notre Dame really yes. prepared you for this. You know, <laughs> Father Paul, <laughs> uh, I look at my life and I, I marvel at how God has prepared me in every major decision of my life, getting married, having children, being at NC State, being at Notre Dame, being at Illinois Tech. And I, I, could, I could spend a lot of time telling you that was all preparation for what I'm doing now. For your retirement. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you can share a little bit about um, what you'll um, share um, with our Catholic um, high school uh, um, presidents and principals. We're blessed here in our diocese with three diocesan high schools, um, yeah. Morris Catholic, where Father Paul had been said served some time as president, yeah. uh, DePaul in Passaic County, and Pope John in Sussex. But we also have four other Catholic high schools that um, are very much a part of a, and a blessing to the church in our diocese. Um, uh, Mary Help of Christians, run by the Salesian Sisters. Uh, Del Barton, run by the Benedictine uh, uh, Brothers and Community Monks. Um, um, Villa Walsh, run by the Filipinis. Filipini Sisters. Yeah. And 
and um, uh, right here uh, next door uh, in Convent Station, St. Elizabeth, Elizabeth's the academy, with, uh, yeah. the, the academy, the high school, and also the university. So, um, um, Sisters the message, of Charity. Sisters of Charity. Hear, yeah. Excuse me, sorry, I meant to. Yes, yes. Thank you, Father Paul. Um, uh, thank God for all of our religious and uh, what a blessing they are um, for the again for the church and our diocese. Uh, but um, uh, your message to um, our, our presidents and principals um, uh, in terms of uh, their role uh, is in leading our, our, our Catholic high schools and in, in, in that secondary education. Um, well, they have a, a, a sacred responsibility, right. mm-hmm. uh, and that's really to uphold our Catholic identity and to, to really lead people to the full truth about, about themselves, about education. And, um, you know, I would just encourage them to joyfully embrace that responsibility. Um, you know, a, a big part of I think educating students and helping them understand who they are as persons is to show them all the different ways that what you learn in school leads you to God. Right. So the, the, the beauty of creation, and I'll talk a lot about that in my remarks uh, at lunch, the goodness of creation, the truth, the, which, and the truths, yeah. the truths of creation are really extraordinary and again i'll, I'll talk it can be revealed to us in the sciences right it's not yeah. Yeah. right right well right, and I'll, right. I'll talk about that you know like quantum entanglement it's go. just it's it's just <laughs> it's, i'll take your word for it <laughs> well, no, no, I'll, I'll, I'll say if you right. it's, it's extraordinary how awe-inspiring the, some of these discoveries of the last you know, 50, 100 years are, are, and how they lead us right to God. Right. And I think it's really important that our our presidents and our principals and our teachers understand that the author of creation and the author of revelation is the same right. author, right. yeah. and these are right. all completely right. integrated right. and right. interconnected. Right. Right. And and when the students see that, when they when they see the beauty and the wonder and just the awe-inspiring character of real true knowledge, then they begin to ask those deep profound questions about themselves. Where's my place in this? Exactly. Yeah, right, right. I, I well, want to I want to emphasize that this is a scientist uh, speaking to us <laughs> about these things because in a in a previous life uh, Dr. Kilpatrick authored a hundred or more articles on on very technical scientific topics, and now you're speaking like a poet and a theologian about these things. <laughs> well, they're they're all connected. Uh, you know, I I I think um, the transcendentals are really the keys to education. Uh, they're the, they're the keys to helping people see the beauty. That that you don't study chemical engineering in isolation. You mm. don't you don't study philosophy in isolation. You don't yeah. study history yeah. in isolation. Um, what a Catholic university does, and what a Catholic school should do, is, is show that they're all they're all integrated. They're yeah, the all, big picture. They're all yeah. inter interconnected, and and I think that's one of the key foundations of Catholic education. I'm going to talk about three in my talk at lunch: humility what I call sacred time and intellectus. Uh, and intellectus is this holistic, reflective, um, you know, ruminating on truth and reality. It was, a, it was a word coined by Thomas Aquinas, and everyone remembers him talking about ratio, but not too right. many people remember him talking about intellectus. Right. Right. And yet it's the key. It's, it's the key to helping people see the interconnectedness of reality. And I, I think that's important. Yeah, absolutely. And, um, more and more difficult to see that as you use that uh, image, um, the true, the beautiful, and the good um, in a society and culture that's that's clouding. Fragmented. Yeah, right. Fragmented. Uh, right, right. And and making it more difficult. You know, the good is whatever I decided it to be. You know, no, no. Uh, as Bishop Barron would always talk about the ego drama versus the the theo drama, right? And uh, and and uh, but you you I kind of you feel for our, our young people growing up in this clouded, um, fragmented um, culture where um, th- to see that uh, that that, um, that the truth is transhistorical, that the, if it's true, it's true. There's a difference between the, the truth and, and, and what's false and not true. And um, 
uh, the true, the beautiful, and the good. And um, yeah, uh, I think uh, unfortunately a disrespect for the beauty of the human person uh, mm. and not recognizing uh, that we're uh, creatures created in the image and likeness of our creator. And um, when we when that's not there, it uh, allows, unfortunately, for some um, pretty terrible um, uh, abuses of of. of of um, the, the beauty of, of, of the human person, especially. Uh, so to the challenge for our high schools and our, 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 our universities to try to, I guess, uh, help our young people have that clarity to, yeah. to be able to see is, is a great challenge these days. Huh? Yeah, Char- Charles Taylor, the Canadian philosopher, talks about expressive individualism. And, you know, we've created this culture in America where people actually believe you know, I can make of reality whatever I want to make of it. And, and oh, by the way, I can make of myself right, yeah, right, whatever right, I want right, to make right, of myself right. rather than, no, you, you received your personhood from a loving God right, who right, creates right. You, created you and loves you just the way you are, strengths, weaknesses, the whole bit, right, just the right. way you are. And, in fact, all of it's a gift. And when you, when you revolt against that and you say, no— uh, I, you know, I, I, it's my body, it's my personhood. I'll do whatever I darn well please with right, that. When you right. do that, you're really bucking God. Right. And, right. uh, and he gives us the freedom to choose and it. And he but gives us the freedom we don't, to do We that. need to be able to see the, the sad results sometimes when there's that uh, terrible overemphasis. And, on, and yet the suicide rate right, of, right. you know, depression. Um, yeah. I mean, yeah, it's right, just, right, it's through right, the roof for right, people right, who right. revolt that way. And so, I think it's really important to help our young people understand, no, you you are loved. You are the beloved son. You, you are, are beautiful. You are beautiful. Right, right, you are the right, beloved right, son, right. the beloved daughter. Right. You are precious God's in God's, God's right, sight. Right. And you can find true joy, true happiness by uh, accepting your creatureliness and, and your fallen creatureliness and allowing God to redeem you. That that's how you find happiness. Right, right, you don't right, right. you don't find happiness by saying, right, Doggone right, it, right, right, I'm gonna right, do I'm gonna make myself. Right, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna make right, my, I'm right. a self made man. Right, yeah. right, right. Pope, um, Pope John Paul, Pope Benedict, Pope Francis all uh, uh, teach exactly this. Right. Yeah. Well it's the gospel. Right, yeah. Right, it's the gospel. Right, right. Uh, he who tries to save his or own life will lose it. But if you're willing to lose your life for my sake, you can say the gospel. You'll find it, um, you know, easy to say, but um, yeah, uh, not so easy uh, yeah. to to hear. And maybe especially um, in in our our current um, context. And Mary's the model, right? That's true. Yeah. The 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 woman who totally accepted the gifts that God right, gave her, right, who right. totally received. Right. You know, in right. fact, Pope Benedict's uh, whole project his whole philosophical theological project was mary is the answer to everything she's the response to this expressive individualism and and you know, pope john paul ii told us to us right it, it's all yours uh, yeah, um, to, to take yeah. you know, yeah, told us to us to right, told right, us right, to right. us um you um uh, made a comment about the the challenge at notre dame uh, but parents uh, successful uh, parents who are very much a part of the culture sending their kids to the yeah. Catholic university. That is very much the issue for our high schools as well. I think, you know, uh, unfortunately a lot of times the folks who can afford Catholic education are, 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 are the ones who are uh, influential and influenced by culture. Mm-hmm. And then they send their kids to a Catholic school. And the challenge for the high school administration is to affirm the fullness of the faith at the same time, um, trying to be responsive to parents. Yes. Can you say any any more about that? <laughs> <laughs> well, part of evangelizing and part of witnessing is engaging parents and engaging families in uh, just what we were talking about before. You know, St. Peter and, um, you know, the letter of Peter 315 says, right. always be ready to give a reason for the hope that is within you. And so sometimes you have to really engage those parents and help them understand that, no, 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 what, you know, what's best for your young person is, is not to give them everything they want, 
but to help them see what they really need as as persons to fully, you know, uh, Pope John Paul and uh, and in Lumen Gentium says, uh, you know, the only way a human person can fully know who they are is through Christ Jesus. Mm-hmm. You know, that's the only way you can right, know that, right, right. and to help them understand that in a in a really healthy way. Sometimes it's an involved process, and right. you, and you have right. to right. kind of take them through that. Uh, bishop Michael Burbage, uh, the Bishop oh. of Arlington, uh, I'm a fan of his podcast, uh, Walk Humbly, and in the most recent episode, I think I might try to po- repost it or something, because he talks about going back to school, and he says, and he was talking actually about the Catholic high schools in Arlington, and um, the um, the pressures that are on students, yes, we want you to do the best academically and want you to succeed, but um, in a balanced way, uh, mm. because, and uh, I think uh, both parents and, and students, that pressure, you know, to, to be at the very top. And uh, yes, we, sure, that's that's good. But uh, is is that hurting maybe some of their um, the mental health issues that they're seeing and facing? And, and, and that, that pressure is, can be so great to get into a, a, mm. a, 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 a university. Uh, um, so, um, uh, I, uh, you know, we, we were going to... Um, ask you to share a, a, a message to parents um, mm. uh, and maybe especially uh, uh, some of our high school um, parents with, with young people in high school and who might be juniors and seniors and thinking about mm. uh, we certainly want them to consider Catholic University mm. and I can say that um, my sister and brother-in-law are going to be here uh, I'm a, a uncle, a proud uncle of two nieces um, one who graduated Catholic U in 2020, my niece Caitlin uh, who studied engineering and is now living in Arlington and working happily in, in construction uh, thanks to her wonderful education and my niece, her younger sister Kira is it, uh, going to be a senior and um, studying nursing and did an internship Getting in D.C. Getting a great education. And, um, so um, I can see from my sister and brother-in-law um, the, the the positive impact that uh, Catholic University has had on um, on their daughters. Um, my their their son um, went to Binghamton, and my brother's uh, younger son also went to Binghamton University. And the, the state universities can do a great education, and and yes, parents are their first um, educators in the ways of faith. But uh, maybe to say a word to to parents, and and maybe especially high school or college uh, parents that have young young children in in high school and, and college, um, what would, would be your advice as now you've gotten, uh, well, all your long years in, 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 in education uh, that uh, you might offer to, to, to parents today? And yeah. this, this is a father of four all right. and, and, and that, a grandfather yeah. of three. <laughs> yeah. yeah, okay. Yeah, Bishop Sweeney, I, um, there was a really excellent book, a secular book, but it made a great point called Excellent Sheep that was written about 10, 11, 12 years ago by a Yale professor named William Dara Sivas. Uh, and Professor Dara Sivas makes the point in that book that we, we do our young people a great disservice by pushing them hard to excel academically without giving them a reason for the hope that is within them. Mm-hmm. So when we, when we push young people to study harder, to get more A's, to go over the bar, to, you know, jump through that hoop and then that hoop and then that hoop. But we don't give them the space to fully discover who they are, to ask the ultimate questions of life. Why am I alive? Why do I exist? Who is God? How do I discover him more deeply? What is my purpose in life? If, if we don't give them the space to fully discover, who am I? We do them a great disservice. And so what I would, what I would say to the parents is pursue, tr- just like we're asking our students, pursue truth, beauty, and goodness. But understand how beauty, goodness, and truth lead us to God. Understand right. that and pass that along to your children. Embrace your faith deeply be an example to your to your students to your children by b- showing that you're open to growing in your faith to deepening your faith um, everyone believes in something everyone right. is called to worship something and when you recognize that it deep in yourself mm-hmm. then you need to get in touch with that and pursue that with some vigor go deep 
inside yourself in prayer and thoughtful reflection. You know, there's I think there's a line either in the Psalms or it might be in the Nag Hammadi scrolls that says, "Be still and know that I'm <laughs> oh, God." Yeah, yeah. Be still and know that I am God. That's Micah, I think. Bring Micah, yeah. bring your heartfelt questions to sound teachers and mentors who know what they're talking about. Um, mm. And don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Simple jump all the second. Yeah, yeah don't right, be right. afraid. Uh, for Jesus has overcome the world. That's right. That's right. Jesus yeah. has overcome yeah. the world. Right. So when you're when you're fearless, when you when you're not afraid to go deep inside yourself to discover who you are, I think that really helps your children. Um, and so that's what I would encourage the parents to do. Thank you for that. And uh, um, uh, we pray for parents on this feast of St. Monica, especially, right? Amen. Uh, for moms and dads and grandparents. And uh, But I think, actually, you paid a great compliment both to our um, high school administrators and faculty and to parents um, when you say your experience in these two years of Catholic in the students. Um, yeah. uh, you're, you're finding students who are educated in the faith, right? Both at home and, and, and getting to university at, at 18 years of old. Uh, and, 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 and they have a sense of the faith and they have a sense of they're, they're, they're there for a reason, right? Uh, I mean, sometimes obviously sometimes more than their parents, <laughs> yeah. go, sometimes right? more than um, the parents. We're, um, call it Wakudis, right? Uh, the, the soon to be, uh, canonized, Unbelievable. Uh, he converted his mom and dad, right? I mean, really, I held they, his um, relic up at the Napa Institute. Oh, is that right? When we, oh, we did a Eucharistic yes, procession yes, yes, at Napa yes. and I got to hold his relic up. No, but we, we did a survey of our students and our prospective students, and what we found was, actually, we had an independent organization do it, Heart and Mind Strategies, and what we found was they're more devout than their, their parents. Mm -hmm. And I'm okay. thinking to myself, how can this be? And I think what it, I think that is a great compliment to the parents. When you, when you nurture— They've given them the space. Yes. Right. Yeah. Right. Yes. Right. Right. When you nurture your students to, to go deep, to reflect, you—, you bring them to church, you bring them to the faith, you give a reason for the hope that is within you. When you do that, and then they start to go deep, it's totally understandable and, that they can have the faith the way they do. And it's causing me that we shouldn't forget our um, parishes and youth ministry yes. programs, right? Yeah. Because I yeah. guess, um, and uh, you're seeing uh, some of the fruits of that, right? And well, I understand fun. the Diocese of Patterson has a wonderful young adult program, yes. has a yeah. wonderful youth ministry program, and I yes. applaud that. You know, yeah. we we need more vicars of evangelization. We need we need more we it. need more dioceses <laughs> focusing on come and see ministry. Right. right. We need more dioceses we, doing that. The three of us noticed the the youthfulness at uh, the the Eucharistic revival. Yes. I mean, there there yes. was Congress. so yeah. many young people. It was people. palpable. And yeah. the the um I see it in our young adults that God is doing a new thing mm. among young adults and young people. What did Jesus say? There, it's one of my favorite scenes in the Passion of the Christ. Uh, you know, Jesus is walking up Golgotha, and he falls, and Mary runs to him, and she kneels down and beside him, and Jesus says, See, Mother, I make, I make all, all things, things new. new. Right, yeah. right, He right. makes At the all... lowest moment, uh, the light such, shines in the darkness, right? It's such a beautiful... And it, it is, and I know this scene well in the Passion yeah. of the it's Christ. It's beautiful. The eye contact between him and... It's just, uh, yeah. Right, right, yeah. and... Everything is literally falling apart and falling down upon his shoulders and hers. Uh, and he says, he's, see, mother, I make all, I make things, all new. things new. Yeah, right, and he right, does. He right, does. Right, yeah. Well, thank you, Dr. Kilpatrick, again, for uh, your visit and for what you're going to share with um, our um, high school uh, presidents and principals and, and, and some others. Uh, and, uh, and, and thanks for taking the time to, to be on the, um, on the, on the podcast. Um, uh, I'm sure any... Um, uh, families or young people that would like to go and visit, uh, especially uh, mm. high, high school juniors and seniors, they'd be um, uh, welcome to to visit the beautiful campus, which has the Basilica of the Immaculate Conception. Maybe say a word a little bit about the campus if there are some that don't don't know the um, the, the the how beautiful the campus is. Yeah, we're very very blessed um, at the Catholic University of America that my my predecessors, uh, Bishop now Bishop O'Connell and John Garvey paid close attention to the beauty of our campus. And so we've, we've built several new buildings recently. We've renovated several older buildings. It, it's really one of the loveliest campuses mm -hmm. I've, I've ever been on. And, and uh, you can't appreciate that 
unless you come and visit. And so what I would, you really can. Right, right. You right, can't, right, you know, you, it right. doesn't, it's And the not, basilica, it's, it's, it's such magnificent. a, yeah, right, right, And we built right, the basilica. Right, right, So right. The, the Catholic University of America in 1920 laid the cornerstone for the basilica, and in 1924, we finished the crypt church, right. and it was our campus church for a while. And, you know, so we have this magnificent campus with this the largest church in North America on and it. And the history um, and the, the meaning of the university, um, uh, you mentioned Archbishop Sheen. Um, my niece's uh, grandmother uh, is a big fan of Archbishop Sheen. and that uh, He I was a professor yes, and I, an I alumnus. Took a picture. There's a, in one of the buildings, there's a the plaque with his, uh, 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 recall, recalling him as, a, as an alumnus and, a, and a, as a, a, a professor. So the two, in my humble opinion— you know, the two greatest public evangelists in the Catholic Church of the last 60, 70 years, Archbishop Fulton Sheen and now Bishop Robert Barron, I agree. are both alumni and of our university. And, uh, you know, Bishop Barron's going to give our commencement address next right? year. Oh, wonderful. Wow. And, uh, you know, we're, we just feel so—by the way, we've educated, I think— Nearly a hundred of the current bishops, both auxiliary and and, or, and local ordinaries right, right, and right, right. and emeriti. Cardinal and Togli was did he? Say Cardinal Togli right, is a the, triple alumnus. Is that right? He's wow. a triple alumnus. Wow. So he he has he has an STL and an STD, but he also has an honorary degree. Wow. So he's a triple alum. <laughs> he gave the beautiful university. homily in, in representing yeah. the Holy Father at the closing of the Eucharistic Congress. Right? Uh, I thought it was I thought it was the knockout punch. You're right. Yeah. You're it right, was right, like right, it was right. like oh. Oh my gosh! Right, right. You know. Go out and be missionary, Eucharistic <laughs> missionary. Right, right. Get with the right, program. Right, that's, right. Yeah, that's right. No, he was he was phenomenal. Go, 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 yeah, go. Yeah, right, right. No, no, we're 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 very very blessed. Well, you know, we we really view ourselves, uh, Your Excellency, as the Bishop's University. Right, right, we're right. we're the University of the Institutional Church, and and we embrace that wholeheartedly, and we're here to serve. The bishops and the diocese and the parishes and we we want people to take advantage of our university and, and but you got to come see it. That's right. That's or right. you don't that's know right. what you're that's missing. Right. That's right. You don't that's know right. what you're missing. Yes. So uh, I'm sure they through the website and other ways they can. Uh, yes. um, Cua.edu. Yeah, great. Great. <laughs> so I think that wraps it up. Join us, please, for uh, Beyond the Beacon next week. Do, do we know who's coming next week yet? Um, I have to. Uh, <laughs> Put you March for Life in um, March for Life in New Jersey. I mean, March for Life is a, a great um, has been uh, uh, that that gathering of Catholics in in Washington D.C. in January and and so many at the University of those days. And uh, we're now having as since Dobbs, you know, uh, the March for Life is promoting state uh, uh, yes. r rallies and marches. And so we're having one here in New Jersey at the end of September. We play, I'll have to come um, for Yes, that. please, yeah. you're welcome. Yeah. And uh, uh, I think one of the organizers is going to be um, on the podcast next week to talk about Good. the Wonderful. march in Jersey. Great. Wonderful. Bishop, could you um, send us out with a blessing? Sure, sure. We once again place ourselves in God's presence in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Through the intercession of Mary, our Blessed Mother, St. Joseph, St. Monica and St. Augustine. Pray for us. We ask now God's blessing upon Dr. Kilpatrick and his ministry and leadership at the Catholic University of America, the faculty and students, and he, uh, God's blessing as well upon all here in our diocese, especially giving thanks for our Catholic uh, high schools and, and, and administrators and teachers and families and students. We ask God's blessing upon us, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Thanks so much. Thank you, Bishop Sweeney. Thanks wonderful, so wonderful Thanks to be with you. Thanks, Paul. Paul. Great Thank job. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. <laughs> Thanks. Appreciate it.